giving us a plan. Just trying to update on Star Wars who was in practice a couple times last week. Where is he at? Yeah, I think he's trending in the right direction. We'll just uh, we'll just see how it goes today and tomorrow. And where's Isaiah at this point? Isaiah. McKenzie. Yeah, I think again he'll he'll uh, he'll be out there today. Um, we'll see how he does, but I expect him to be full full go for the game at this point. So all these uh, all the preseason predictions are written out. Everyone's got their power rankings and everything else. Um, you guys are top three, four everywhere, Sean. How do you keep these guys from thinking too much about it, keeping an even keel, not letting their heads go off? Yeah, well, you gotta you gotta stay in the process of week week by week season, right? So um, if you focus on things outside of this building, on things we can't control, and then you get your tail kicked, and um, so we've gotta be mentally tough in our approach and focus in on our process and insulate ourselves as much as we can from all that other noise that that is uh, is outside the building. It's a little different this year than maybe last year what you guys accomplished a year ago even though you didn't get to your ultimate goal. So do you change or alter your message in that sense to the players? Uh, I think you always want to meet your team where your team is. Um, so I recognize that and, and, and try and be aware of that. Uh, again, though, um, this is such a routine, process-driven um, operation, uh, in particular during the season. That's the mental shift that you have to, that you have to go through to get yourself ready to go. Um, you know, my family's there. I go home. I, they know what time I'm going to bed and uh, try and be a a good husband, good dad. At the same time, they respect that I got something on my mind, and, and I expect the same from our team all season long. John, we talked about chilling your team from the noise. Is it harder when the noise is so positive to where, you know, just naturally as a human being, you want to seek that out here, as opposed to when it's negative, it's easy to say, I want to shut that out. But this, like Sal said, this is almost entirely positive for you guys. I, you know, I think you go back, though, also to, again, just I keep going back to the to the routine, to the to building yourself through the week to get yourself ready to go, and whether it's positive or, or negative, it all becomes noise and, and can pull away from what you're trying to accomplish. And and uh, I, mean, I think you watched the golf this past weekend. Those of you that, that golf and Patrick Cantley, I think is his name was. I mean, he was he held the lead for so long, and I think that showed a lot of mental strength by him and, and I think we can learn from that. We can use that as a model to, hey, no matter what's going on outside, you got to stay dialed in, you got to stay in your process and get yourself just right and ready to go. Is anybody in the 53 out today? Not great. Um, I think Starro, Starro may be out today uh, or he may be limited. We'll see. Well, John, defensively, uh, we kind of talked about this a lot throughout the whole offseason, but now that you're here, um, your expectation for your defense, would it be fair to say you need that defense to play better as a whole than it did throughout last season? I think, you know, every year is a new year. Um, we need to play better as an overall team. I need to coach better, and, I, and that's what we're out here. That's a goal, right, of every year get better, every year defensively get better, every year offensively special teams get better. Um, every year I got to coach better than I did the year before. That's the right mindset. That's the growth mindset we talk about, and and that's also an accountability to one another that we have to have uh, as a good team. I'm assuming Levi Wallace has retained his job um, off the train. And if so, what is it about him that keeps this whatever company? He just doesn't sweat, show or show you know, him sweating during the preseason, no matter what competition you bring in. What what is it about this kid with a walk on? Yeah, I think it's the person, um, John. I think it's really the person you're talking about. He's a special person, um, raised by a great family. Um, obviously, just has his mom now. Um, great, great woman, and continues to support him. And he's just taken that. Um, you know, I've never met. I never met his dad when his dad was was alive. So, but he's taken that. I'm sure from his from his parents. 
and he's just got an incredible amount of poise about him and, and steadiness, if you will. We've talked about um, how much it helps the defensive backs on your team going up against Cole and Diggs every day. The Steelers have a really good receiving core. How much does that translate now, kind of go, you know, into use? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it can only help that, that our DBs go against our guys. I'm sure their DBs feel the same way. It's a good battle competitively on our field here as you see it, and it can only make you better if you're wired the right way. And, um, you know, that's that's an important, con you know, approach, if you will, that we have that we just keep trying to be as competitive as we can through practice to make games um, uh, very familiar for us. What, does anything in particular stand out about the Steelers receiving court? Uh, very talented. Um, you know, they've got uh, Juju in the slot. He moves all around. They move him around. You know, they've got speed outside uh, with multiple guys outside 18 and 13. And then uh, with what Claypool has done at, at an early point in his career, been very impressive. And now you add the tight ends with Ebron and, and uh, Fryer move to it. I mean, you know, very very good tight end package as well with the backs, so uh, they're extremely talented on offense. John, uh, last week we saw Cameron Brady on the club on his hand. What, how much does that limit a defensive back in particular? Yeah, I think it's kind of, again, just what you're used to, and, and uh, you know, he's going to continue to work with that um, today, this week, Joe, and, and get himself to where it's functional for him, and I think after a while it just becomes kind of, um, you know, like maybe a boxer putting on the gloves after a while. It's just it's just there. So you just you go to work with it and and you're willing to and able to work around it. Are you expecting him to play? Yes. Yeah. Sean, are you anticipating continuing the rotation of the guard spots <coughs> in the game, or are you ready to to set that uh, as things stand now? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's there's good competition there, as I said last week, John, and um, I think we'll know a little bit more as the week goes on and um, comfortable rotating if we want to rotate, but also comfortable with, with a little bit more continuity if we need to go that route as well. So very confident in, in both Ike and, and Cody and, and John. How do you plan for, for, for T.J. Watt and should he be in the lineup, yeah. um, given the uncertainty of his situation? Well, you know, that that's for them to handle that part of it. For us, we know he's a, an elite player, um, elite player at his position, one of the best defensive players in, the, in our league, and he wreaks havoc on, on game plans. So uh, you always have to know where, where he is. Hey, Sean, um, 20 years in the league or whatever it's not for you, you're, you're top four, maybe even top five <coughs> receivers. As a group, can, can you maybe recall a group that potentially is, is that good talented-wise and what they could possibly do in, in your time. Have you seen a group like that along the way? So. Come on, come on. Can we take that bait? Is that what you want me to do? <laughs> no, it's, uh, they're, they're good. We, we hope, you know, listen, we've got good players. Pittsburgh's got good players, and it should make for a really good game and uh, what people come out to the stadiums for this, this coming weekend. I think it, it'll be a Great for fans to be back in the stadiums across the NFL, and, and uh, we expect a great environment here in Orchard Park and a fan base that's been waiting a long time for, for this type of uh, opportunity. And uh, we expect them to be loud when we're on defense and uh, a little less loud when we're on offense. Uh, but we've got to put in the work this week to, to get them hopefully something to cheer about. But good opponent, right? Good opponent. They've got good, good players. We've got good players. Did you watch any of the college games? I did, it? yeah, and, yeah. Well, I was going to, as a follow-up, what did you think of that, seeing the stadiums full and a lot of the emotion that the fans had, that the, the teams, of course, college is moving to make a game. Then again, they say, Orchard well, Park's a lot like a college atmosphere. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, you know, it was uh, from a from a fan's perspective, it was fun to watch. Um, that dynamic's different, though, when you're in when you're in the stadium, right? When you're doing your job. That's where that process comes in, and that and that mental, uh, mental awareness, focus, whatever you want to say it, um, and that's what we're here to do. That's part of our lead up to the to the weekend and to doing our job at a high level is <clears throat> getting yourself through that process one day at a time. And uh, but as a fan, uh, you can you can kind of sit back and watch and appreciate 
from a fan standpoint, being back in the stadium and everything, there's a lot of great environments in college football this past weekend. John, as you look at um, the preseason tape from Pittsburgh, what were your impressions, takeaways from seeing Najee Harris uh, back there? Yeah, um, really good young player, talented both in the run and pass game. Um, you know, picks up protections well. Um, you know, obviously he's, he's a high pick in the draft for a reason, and and uh, you know I'm sure he's going to have a great career. But he looks like he's off to a great start. What was it like actually having the tape to watch this game? <laughs> uh, a little different, I guess. Uh, there's still a lot of unknowns about their offense, right? Just because of the new coordinator, and and uh, and so we're going to have to have a good week of practice. For your own team guys going into year two, how much does that help have a, a more regular offseason to see what they can do? And with our with our players going into into year two year, yeah. year two uh, the ones that had a had a off season you mean is that right. yeah yeah I mean it's that's this is the first year for some of those guys even through three years of having a normal off season um, the habits that go with having a go along with having a good productive off season um, so that's why we have our development team um, our medical team our strength and conditioning team and they they did a phenomenal job. Well, you know, I think the continuity is, is the key piece. Brandon did a good job uh, making sure that that was in place. Um, so, you know, but continuity doesn't win games either. So it's you got to put the work in. you got to make sure you're on the same page and, and continue to, as I think it was Sal asked earlier about, we got to continue to get better and grow. And you can never stay the same. you got to keep getting better. And that's, that's something you got to be very intentional about every day, and I know those guys are. That's good. All right.